God richly bless all of you, brothers and sisters. I would like to repeat myself on what God has prescribed in the New Testament concerning the use of oils in the church. It has become so pervasive in the world. Those of you who direct your family members who are not here to me in my office on Tuesdays and Thursdays, for the last few weeks, looks like all the people who come in, they are focused upon the fact that they have been anointed by a pastor somewhere and still things are not working well. So they don't understand. They were emphasizing on the anointing that have received from their pastors or their prophets. What made me surprised was that our deacon, Brother George, came to me and said, there is a man who has been coming here persistently that he wants to see you. So one day he gave the man a chance to come and see me, and I saw him. He said, Pastor, I am a bishop in New Jersey. New Jersey is in the United States. I have churches under me, but they are not growing. I've gone to the churches and I've put anointing number, give them anointing, anoint the place and the rest, but still it's not going. So I'm asking you if you can help me to come to New Jersey and go to my churches for me. I saw you on your Facebook, whatever it is. I got his number and I put it down. And I said, wow. So if you're a bishop and you are hope, your hope is that when you anoint the building with oil, people will come to the church. If you, a bishop, you are thinking like this, oil, 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 because you have put the oil in your church, then you think that is all, then I wonder the church members. Another woman came to me, a beautiful, a beautiful girl. Pastor, I've raised a container. I'm, I'm selling hardware, plumbing things. I paid 500 Ghana cities for a pastor to come and anoint the things in my house. From January till now, nobody even has bought even a brush. Even though they have anointed the place. Pastor, woman anointed her, woman anointed her. So the mind of the woman is that so long as there is anointing, things must work. These things are the things that are worrying me, that it looks like the hope of the people are being geared towards anointing oil, anointing oil. The third one came, Pastor, may you bold. Bolt, and I'm here. I'm saying, what is bold? I didn't know bold. Oh, somebody has given me a car. I'm working to pay, and I'm using it for bold. That's another form of Uber. But every time I called my pastor to come, he put anointing oil on the engine. He used it on the steer. He used it inside the boot. And yet every time I go out, the sales I make, the following day, I will use the same thing to buy and repair the car. So I don't know why. Maybe the oil my pastor uses is not good. That's why I'm here. So you see that the mind of the people is getting closer and closer to anointed oil, anointed oil, anointed oil, because that is what is being sold in town. So I want to repeat myself and going through a few scriptures to let you know what the New Testament rule of anointing oil is. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13. When you turn your Bible, I'm going to use the Amplified Version. But we have to realize that if you look at the Bible carefully, Apostle Paul is giving division between the Old Testament and its deeds and the New Testament and its deeds. When God speaks of a new covenant or agreement, he makes the first one obsolete, the old one out of use. And what is obsolete, out of use, and annulled because of age is ripe for disappearance and to be dispensed with altogether. Apostle Paul is emphasizing that there is an Old Testament. Within the Old Testament, there are deeds, instructions, including the use of anointing oil. How they ordain priests, Aaron and the rest, oil was used. How they ordain what we call it, uh, the king, oil was used. When Jacob rose up in Bethel, Uz, 
he changed the name to Bethel. The oil that he used, he put a pillar down and pour oil on it and change the name from Uz to Bethel. You go to the Old Testament, you see the use of oil in so many different ways. So when we came to the New Testament, Apostle Paul says some of these deeds is going to be annulled. It's actually annulled and it is no longer in use. The Old Testament deeds, they were a shadow of the New Testament. So when you are in the New Testament, the Old Testament is obsolete, out of use. And what is obsolete and out of use and annulled because of age is ripe to disappear. So gradually, the deeds of the Old Testament is supposed to disappear into the New Testament. Verse 24, Apostle Paul is trying to explain even more further that Jesus Christ is the mediator, go between the agent of the new covenant and to the sprinkle of blood. The moment you hear the sprinkle of blood, we are talking about the Old Testament. For in the Old Testament, all the vessels within the church must be sprinkled with blood. The tent and everything. So when you see Apostle Paul talking about Jesus Christ being the go-between mediator and the agent of the New Testament and the sprinkle of blood, Jesus Christ is the only recognized authority that man must perform things through between the New and the Old Testament. He speaks of the mercy seat and all those, and all these things are Old Testament. And he went as far as to the time of Abel, that even the blood of Jesus Christ that we have claimed from the cross of Calvary is more powerful and greater than the blood of Abel. Also, the blood of bulls and goats that were used to sprinkle things in the Old Testament, they are all nothing. Jesus Christ alone is the mediator and the gold between of the New Testament and the Old Testament. It's final. So when you look at the scripture very carefully, say all that we do in words or in deed, we must do it in the name of Jesus Christ. So you look at the life of Apostle Paul and his ministration. In the Old Testament, when you are ordaining a priest, today a pastor or a prophet, whatever it is, they use oil. When you are ordaining a, a king, they use oil. But in the days of Apostle Paul, what he introduced to them in the New Testament church was laying hands on people. When you are doing a pastor, an evangelist, whatever it is, we lay hands on them in the name of Jesus Christ. The oil is no longer in use. The oil is no longer in use because Apostle Paul introduced the laying on of hands. If you remove the laying on hands and you go back to the Old Testament, then we must apply oil on the person that we're ordaining, on the priest, on the prophet, on the deaconess, on the deaconess, on the deacon, and whatever it is. But those days are gone. Apostle Paul laid his hands upon ministers, upon elders of the church, not anointing them with oil, because those days are gone. So in the New Testament church, we were made aware in James chapter 5, verse 13, we are made aware that if there is anybody on earth in the church who is suffering, afflicted, ill-treated, the devil has unleashed trouble upon that family. Attack of the devil is there, and you yourself you can feel that this situation that my family is going in is attack of the devil. The Bible said, let the person pray. That is the command. Is anyone among you afflicted, ill-treated, suffering evil? He should pray. You can fast and pray and bring the problem before God. That is the requirement. If by the grace of God you are happy also, sing praises to God. So we have made to see that in whatever situation we are, the most important one is that if we see that the devil has unleashed his strength upon us, we are not supposed to use any oil upon our lives. We must kneel down, fast, and pray over the situation. It's a command. 
It's a command. Is anyone among you afflicted? Is anyone among you suffering, ill-treated, suffering evil? Let the person pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the person pray. That is the command of the New Testament. So prayer is the key. Fasting and praying is the key. When you take a decision, you look at yourself, and you realize that there is trouble, you can kneel down, you can pray, you can fast, and ask God to help you. That is the only requirement. Any other form of fighting the devil is not permitted. As you go, you use oil. As you go, you use red, red calico, you read red candle, blue candle. All those things have nothing to do with the devil. The only way you can describe the devil and push him away is to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a simple requirement. You don't need to buy anything. In whatever situation, be it your finances, your marriage, in whatever situation, you must pray. It is a mandate of God. I've told you about the situation in the Old Testament where God is blessing people, where we see one of the Israelites are given the name to be able to bite the heel of a horse, that the rider must fall down while the, ho the horse himself also will fall down. It's a secret form of prayer, thou what an other. So prayers must come on. Every blessed day you wake up and you see situations in your life, in every circumstances, Prayer is the key. But then apostles went on that there are people who are sick in bed. The sickness is extremely dangerous. And they, the people themselves who are sick in bed, have actually looked into their life and they realized that it's because of a sin that they committed that probably has brought this sickness to them. So they read, they said it to us in verse 14 of the same James. They said, a person who is sick in bed, a person who has realized that the sickness is dangerous and the sickness has come to him because or her, because of her own sin. He has looked into himself or herself and realized that he is at guilty before God. Is anyone among you sick? Then that person shall call the church elders, the spiritual guy, the pastor, the deacon, the elder, and they should pray over him, anointing him with oil in the Lord's name. This is the only requirement that the New Testament church is telling a pastor, an elder, the spiritual guide, to use anointing oil upon the person who is sick in bed, who cannot walk, who the person himself, through whatever means, has called the elders. You read it, you go back and you see that when you call the elders, it means that you are going to confess. Are going to confess because you have realized that the sickness that is taking place of you is because of your guilt, it's because of something that you have done. So we must come with the information must go to the church for the leadership, and then the leadership will come around you where you are sick, and you will open your mouth and speak. Verse 15. You open your mouth and speak. When you finish speaking, according to and the prayer that is of faith will save him who is sick and the Lord will restore him. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. The forgiveness will bring restoration that he is not going to be sick anymore. Why? He has confessed to the church elders, and the church elders has anointed him with oil on his sick bed. This is the only provision within the New Testament. If you sprinkle oil on your engine of your car, you sprinkle oil on your provision shop, you sprinkle oil on the land, it doesn't have anything to do. God will serve God with knowledge and precepts. The New Testament has given us information, not like the Old Testament. You can sprinkle oil in anything. Jacob put oil on a rock and then changed the place. But the New Testament church is different. 
The, the, the things that we use in the Old Testament, according to the scripture, it is decaying away, disappearing. It is annulled. It is no longer necessary. And yet we see pastors in their millions and thousands prescribing the same old thing. So it does not work. Because God does not accept old things anymore. So you see the man who came to me, things are not working. Even though he's talking about anointing oil, the girl, the woman who came to me, things are not working because they are printed anointing oil. Because the people are using it to make money from you. Prayer is the key, my brothers and sisters. Only prayer in the name of Jesus Christ in a righteous life can transform life. If you depend on oils of oils on oils on oils, you can buy all the oils of this world because God does not recognize it. It will not work. Praise the Lord. So in our narration to these people, all that they have in mind is anointing oil. So when you pray for them simple prayer, that this is your bowl, this is your car, what you are going to use as Uber, whatever it is, it is going to be well. Without doing another anointing oil, they think you have done nothing. And where there is no faith, God doesn't work. So when you meet people outside there and you are directing them to me and they are talking about anointing oil, let them know beforehand that this man you are going, there's no oil there. You're only going to be prayed for, and you must believe the prayers. And when you believe, answers will come. We have to be able to realize this man who came from New Jersey, a huge man with hat with some cars, and he came down there, and he's still expecting some extra miracles from me that I might give him something other than supernatural than this oil or super oil for him to go and use. He was surprised. Nothing. God will bless your ministry. Please go. He sat down for some minutes. Is that all? Is that all? He was expecting me thinking that I have some special oil from Israel that I can sell to him and he too will take it to uh, uh, USA, New Jersey and sprinkle it upon his all his churches. Three minutes, less than three minutes, I say, brother, go. May God be with you. Your church will grow in the name of Jesus Christ. And he was still saying amen and he was still sitting down. <laughs> he was waiting for something. It will not work, brothers and sisters. The Old Testament system is gone. We are in the New Testament era and the content of the New Testament is that Whatsoever thing that you will do, whatsoever, whatsoever things you will do in word and in deed, do it in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is final. That is final. 